Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work A. And Work A, in this case, by Composer X, well, Composer X is Isaac Albanese. And Work A has got to be Iberia. Of course it's Iberia. Nobody cares about anything else by Albanese, which is a pity because he wrote beautiful music. And quite a bit of it, actually, especially for keyboard. Why is Iberia such an important work? Well, it's the Mavlast of Spain. That is, you know, it's 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 the great national work of 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 you know romantic nationalist sentiment and portraiture and color and, and oh, it's amazing. It's an absolutely glorious piece of music. It's it's quite advanced, actually, in style for its period. It was written in the early 1900s. It has a lot of impressionistic, Debussyan kind of harmony. Um, it's extraordinarily virtuosic and difficult. I mean, Albanius was a composer who really poured his heart and soul into this this one piece. And as I mentioned in the previous talk, which was on Pergolesi, and we talked about the Stabat Mater, you know, if if the evil god Cancrazans really decided to eliminate everything in classical music but for one work per composer, and this was the one he preserved, we would know, first of all, that Albanius was, was a great composer. Um, this is his most characteristic work. But also, nobody would much miss anything else of his. Um, and that's a pity because, you know, there, there are two answers to that argument, why we need more Albanians. One is we really need to, we really, someone who writes a piece like Iberia, it, it's very unlikely that everything else he wrote would be negligible. And it isn't. And there's, I mean, there are operas, there's, there are wonderful piano suites. There really is. There's terrific music out there. Some more pieces similar to those in Iberia, Spanish-influenced pieces, but also the piano sonatas and other works, they're well, well worth hearing. So that's that's one argument. The other argument is that is that this is such a distinctive, emblematic exercise in Romantic nationalism, and we should have an opportunity to savor and sample the other ones. And there are many others, everything from things like Charles Ives' Holiday's Symphony, for example, to to, uh, of course, Smetna's Mavlast, which we've talked about. And if you look at other countries and other people who've done these pieces, each takes its own special form. You know, Sibelius has finished of Kulervo, or if we should say Finlandia, just a little tone poem. You know, we, we, we have to sample all of these different things. One of the reasons that Iberia is so exceptional is that it is it, for its period, for its time, taken in toto, one of the grandest and most magnificent of all keyboard cycles. I mean, the whole thing plays for about oh, almost an hour and 15 minutes or so. If you do it all, you know, it's in several books, um, each with, you know, three pieces each. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's an extraordinarily broad, visionary sort of achievement, just as Mavlast was. But the reason it took the form it did is because Spain had no orchestral tradition at this time. I mean, it really didn't until the second half of the 20th century, for the most part. Music in Spain, classical music in Spain, was based on the culture of Italy and France, for the most part. Spain was a bit of a backwater culturally. It was a little behind. And it was it was principally an opera culture, a theatrical culture. There was, of course, indigenous Spanish theater. There was Zarzuela, which is fabulous, and which people really should get to know because it's a huge repertoire of glorious music. But it was theatrical music. It was stage music. There was no symphonic tradition in Spain. Yes, there were orchestras, but it was all imported. It was as imported to Spain as it was imported to the United States. It was more imported to Spain than it was in the United States because the United States always had a large Germanic element and large independent funded symphony orchestras. I mean, the orchestras in the U.S. are as old as the orchestras in Europe, but there was nothing comparable in Spain. And so, and so the Spanish national epic was either going to be a sort of Wagnerian ring of the Nibelungen goes to Spain kind of thing, 
which for various reasons it wasn't because Iberian culture was entirely dominated by Italian opera, not the German concept there. Um, or it could be in the realm of keyboard music, chamber music, music for small forces. And so the Spanish national culture was expressed in pianistic terms, and that made pianistic history, because it was never a keyboard work that accomplished as much as Albanus did in Iberia in, in, in encapsulating you know, an, an entire nation, an entire people. Um, what an amazing achievement Iberia is. And so, yes, it is the choice if you could have only one, but it's an important milestone in the history of musical composition, and we need to hear more. And so we must tell the god Cancrasans that he must forswear his evil intention and let us hear other examples of similar work in other nations in whatever shape they take. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.